we are talking about copyright and specifically about copyright fair use. We're going to talk a little bit first about what copyright is, what it protects, and then we'll delve into what fair use is and what it doesn't do. Sounds so nice. what is a copyright? Well, copyright protection subsists in original works of authorship. And this, this protection begins the minute that work of authorship is fixed in any tangible medium of expression, now known or later developed, from which they can be perceived, reproduced, or otherwise communicated, either directly or with the aid of a machine or device. That's what the copyright statute says. And what that basically says is the, the minute you put something into, into something that's, that's tangible, you've got, you've, got, you've, got, you've got copyright on, okay? It protects literary works, books, books, hint, uh, musical works, including any accompanying words, dramatic works, including any accompanying music, pantomimes and choreographs and pictorial and graphic and sculptural works and motion pictures and AV works and sound recordings and architectural works. So that building that building that your architect is is uh, is designing for you that that uh, that copyright probably belongs to the architect. Um, it does not protect ideas. Ideas are not protectable. We cannot protect ideas. We are not the thought police. It does not protect procedures. Those are protected by patent. It does not protect processes. Those are also protected by patent. Systems also patent. Methods of operation patent. Can't protect concepts, same ideas, ideas. We can't protect the, we can't protect what's in your head. It has to come out of your head and be expressed, okay? We can't protect principles and we cannot protect discoveries if those, uh, which those are also protectable by patent. Um, copyright also does not protect things like taglines. Those are protected by trademark. Okay, there are exclusive rights that a copyright holder has. We have very little, we have very little respect for these exclusive rights these days. The internet has made copy and paste incredibly easy and uh no i'm not going to take that uh, so and all rights are subject to to uh to limitations okay they have the exclusive right to reproduce the copyrighted work in copies that includes copy and paste and posting on the internet okay they have the exclusive right to prepare derivative works things that th things that are based on the on the original work OK, they have the exclusive right to distribute their work um, in the case of uh, they have the exclusive right to perform any performable works. OK, they have the exclusive right to display their works. And there are some limitations to this exclusivity. Uh, for example, I can go and I can take a picture of a Frank Lloyd Wright house and I hold copyright in that picture. Frank Lloyd Wright's estate does not. OK. So I can and I can display that that picture that I took of Frank Lloyd Wright's uh, architecture. Um, if the architectural work has to be altered or even destroyed by the then current owner, the copyright holder can do absolutely nothing about that. OK, uh, it, the, the other limitation to copyright is something called fair use and fair use is this idea that it's OK to use it because I'm not using a lot of it, or it's okay to use it because I'm using it for, for my own purposes, or it's okay to use it because I'm not making money off of it. No, wrong. Fair use is very specific. And uh, it, is, uh, it, it, it protects works of authorship. It, it protects, it prote it, it's a defense to infringe, it's a defense to an infringement uh, accusation, okay? So if you're using the work for something like criticism, or comment or news reporting or teaching. And that includes, you can make multiple use for teaching purposes, um, uh, for classroom use only, okay, for scholarship or for research, that doesn't infringe copyright. And there are very, you know, fair use is one of these very, very, very gray areas. And it, it, it has this gradient and it's, it's, it, it's fuzzy and it's case by case. So in order to, in order to, uh, in order to establish fair use, uh, the uh, copyright holder has to establish the purpose and character of your use, including whether it's commercial or not, or not for profit, okay? The nature of their copyrighted work, the amount of substantiality of the portion used, in other words, did they, did they, use, did they use half a sentence or did they use the whole book? Um, the effect of the use on the potential market, did they, did they help your sales? If they helped your sales, that's probably fair use. If they didn't, well, you know, that, that leads the other way. Okay, um, so 
there are some assumptions that go into a fair use. First of all, you have to have a, a prima facie case of copyright infringement. That would mean you have a valid copyright, okay? And you have two substantially similar works. Notice that there is nothing about money in that definition. Money does not come into play in copyright infringement. It doesn't matter whether you profit from your infringing act or not. Okay. Fair use was actually invented by the courts, and it was invented in, uh, in a case called Folsom v. Marsh in 1841 by the United States Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court listed out, listed out uh, these four factors, and we now have codified these four factors. And you'll find that at, uh, at uh, uh, Title 17 of the United States Code, Section 107, if you really want to go look it up. And as I said, there are four factors. The first factor is what's, what's the use? What is it commercial? Who's doing the copyright? Okay, if it's, if it's a school, if it's a teacher, you know, that's an educational use and it leans toward fair use. Um, but if you're talking about something like Cliff Notes, where you're, you're condensing and you're selling the, the condensation, yeah, that's going to lean uh, more toward infringement. Okay. Second, does the copyright, does the copying go to the hair, go to the heart of that fair use preamble, i.e. is it for the, one of the purposes elucidated in that preamble? Okay. If yes, yeah, it leans toward fair use. If no, it leans toward infringement. Okay. Um, what's, the, uh, is the use transformative? Okay. In other words, has the infringer added something new to this, to this supposedly uh, infringing copy. Uh, if, if so, then, then yeah, that leads toward fair use. But have they simply superseded or created another version of what's already there? That leads toward infringement. Okay. Um, also, will the copyright holder be in the derivative market, i.e., did J.K. Rowling, who wrote a book, want to enter the movie market? Okay. If yes, that leads toward infringement. If no, that leads toward fair use. Okay, the second factor is the nature of the work. Is it creative or factual? If, if it's pure fact, you know, if I'm writing a, if I'm writing a physics textbook, uh, then that copyright protection is very thin because I can't get protection on the laws of physics. I just can't do it. They're universal and they're there and you can't, you can't fix that, okay? However, if it's pure fiction, you know, Barry, Barry wrote a book, Barry wrote a work of fiction and he's published, he's published it and he's marketing it, I believe at this point, it's on Amazon. And that's pure fiction, okay? It came out of Barry's head. That is a very robust copyright protection. And Barry needs, Barry, if he has not already done so, needs to register that work with the US Copyright Office to ensure that he has the, the proper protections in place. Okay, um, because otherwise, you know, yeah, that copyright subsists in when you write it down, but it's not actually protectable until you have that copyright certificate in your little hand. Okay, uh, the third uh, factor is the amount taken, uh, the quantity. Okay, uh, and you know, as I say, if you if you take a snippet, uh, then yeah, okay, it might be fair use. If you take the whole book, then it's probably not fair use. But also counted in there is the quality of what you're taking. Is that snippet to go to the heart of that copyrighted work? Well, you know, that's going to lean more toward not fair use. Um, and how do you determine that substantiality? Okay. Um, uh, you can determine it by, by looking for the purpose for which the, 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 um, the excerpt was taken. And you can use a lot of that original material if you took it for criticism or comment. And you can use less if you took it for parody. And you can use the least if you're making a satire. And you have to understand that when you go to court, the original, the original intent has to match the argument the lawyer's making, okay? Otherwise, otherwise it's simply ingenuous and courts see th right through that. Okay, um, parody versus satire. Parody is a reflection of the work itself, okay? Um, and satire is a reflection on the society that produced, not produced the work. Um, and if you're not talking about the work itself, you're entitled to take a lot less from that work, okay? And there are some courts that have actually taken satire out of the realm of fair use altogether. So be careful, A, what you're taking, B, the purpose for which you're taking it, and C, where you're doing this, 
Okay, the fourth factor is that potential market effect. Okay, if the original work was unknown until the parody occurred, and after that, that par after that parody, the work became wildly popular. Hey, guess what? That's fair use. That's not a problem. Okay, uh, if the original work derived completely uh, from the uh, 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 the completely usurps that market, then that's infringement and that's a huge problem, okay? Um, if a scathing review destroys the market for an original re uh, infringement, that is not a problem. That is fair use, okay? Because it's a review, okay? Then we come to the fifth fair use factor. You sum up all the results of these questions asked. You go back to that preamble, you, you apply an equitable rule of reason, and then you're the judge, and this spins on, the wit, on, on, your, on your gut feeling about it. So fair use is just one of these things that spins on the whim of a judge, and you can't tell whether it's fair use. So when you're taking something, kind of presume it's not fair use. Go the safe route. 